Hello again everyone, this is Armando, back with another update on my Millennium Falcon. And as you can see, I continue to work on the cockpit photo etch part assembly. I've laid in a couple of, uh, of the decals, and uh, these things are pretty sweet, very detailed, and they do allow the light to go through. So that's going to be nice. Uh, one thing about these decals in particular, just so you know, if you ever get them, they are all in one continuous plastic sheet. So cutting them out roughly, you're going to have leftover clear plastic all over. So the best way to do these is to cut them right along the lines and then put them in the water, like I did here. Otherwise, you're going to have a protruding plastic, which is a lot harder to cut when it's soft than when it's still attached to the backing. So, just a little tip in case you use these. Uh, I will continue to do that and I'll uh, come back with another update. Hello again, everyone. Armando here with another update on my Millennium Falcon build. And uh, as you can see, the cockpit assembly has pretty much been finished. Uh, well, not finished, but assembled anyway. <laughs> uh, the photo etch parts have been built, and I will show you. I've uh, already put an LED strip behind, and we'll light it up. Here's the figures. There's a uh, Chewie and Han and Obi-Wan and Luke in the back and there's a background which I'll light in a minute uh, I've also glued the tunnel together and let me just show you some of the detail on this thing because this is amazing that little tube there is a Greebly that I had to glue on there also those eight circles are another two pieces that were glued in there and this whole tube is another Greebly that was glued and so is this so that gives you an idea of the number of parts and the detail that this thing has um, let me light the uh, the light now okay the decals from this photo etch set do have a nice detail which shows a uh, coloring in the areas where the light goes through oops you can see reds and blues there they're washed out a little bit by the camera and also by the light I tried to haze the light as much as I could and I'll show you the inside of the tunnel how I did it um, but uh, I'm pleased with the way it looks you can see there's some colors there that should give nice emphasis to the figures inside the cockpit the uh, inside I primered white to give more shine and I laid a three LED strip on the bottom so it wouldn't hit directly but shine upwards rather and I also put a piece of um, it's an onion paper style it's a paper that comes in the uh, plastic, uh, plastics in between the sheets very thin I took a piece and I glued it on there so it wouldn't move and it effectively hazes the light very nicely so uh, that's coming along. I'll, uh, I'll be doing some light blocking uh, tomorrow along those seams on the inside since I can reach them, probably with a little bit of tulip paint uh, so as not to damage anything on the outside. You can see there are some light leaks, although they're not very pronounced. This kit fits like a glove as, as all fine molds kits do. You can see that there's very little in the way of light leaks, but I will be doing it. The other thing I've been doing is I uh, assembled the uh, the radar dish and uh, put the decals that belong in the back there. It's already painted, and uh, the next step will be assembling the turrets. That's uh, what the instructions say. Um, I'm following them pretty much uh, in order right now after painting the uh, saucers 
and uh, for the most part that's what I'll be doing because it's such a complicated kit with so many parts that uh, I want to be careful uh, I don't miss anything along the way so that's my progress so far and I'll be back with another update soon talk to you later hello again everyone Armando here and uh, some more progress on my Millennium Falcon uh, been assembling detail parts for the most part for the past few days and this kit is full of them here are the lateral round attachments on the saucer and the turret guns and the turrets I am still debating whether I will light them or not decals were placed inside and if I can show you a view with the lights, you'll be able to see them. They're kind of hard to see. Well, maybe if I light them with a flashlight instead, you'll be able to see them. Well, they're there. They're not very visible. That's probably why I'm going to light the turrets on both of them. Um, so that they can be seen a little better. But also because the lighting is going to make them look better there. You can see them a little bit better there. I've also completed assembly of the landing gears. They haven't been painted either. The two long ones are the rear ones and the three short ones are the front ones. This is the photo etch part. All of this will be painted in the hull color. And uh, that will be done later. I also, for the last day and a half or so, have been working on how I was going to light my main engine. I went back and forth with several different methods and I finally settled on a combination of an LED strip and blue SMDs. The reason I combined white LED strip and blue SMDs is because as you guys will recall from the movie as the main engines power up when the ship is beginning to take off they start off blue and then they turn white uh, very intense white and I wanted to try and achieve that now I'll probably be exploring the possibility of using a board so I can make a more gradual shift but for now I have them hooked up to a center off toggle switch which as the name implies is off in the center position and it turns on on one side and turns on another side turning on different things so I've fitted this as a mock-up here on the uh, on the hull it's not glued together or anything but uh, we'll be attaching it in a minute and showing you the effect but I wanted to show you what I've done on the inside as you can see there is an LED strip running along the length well first of all I, I primered white on the inside then I took a styrene strip and I placed it in the back wall and glued it in place so I could smooth it out because there were some ridges in the original uh, wall and they would make it a little more difficult to glue everything plus I wanted more reflectivity from the white styrene strip then I went ahead and glued the LED strip which has 12 cool white LEDs and I exited the wire through a hole on the side which you can see right there if I can get it to focus come on come on It's wanting to focus on something else, but uh, there you go. Then I took 12, I mean 11 blue SMDs and glued them in position between each of the LEDs. As you can see, they're all facing outward. there and there. Then I took tulip paint white and I 
painted all the wires that were black so as to make them as white as possible to gain as much reflectivity as possible and then I took white Tamiya paint and I painted the LED strip and everything in between the SMDs and LEDs in white again to make the chamber as white as possible and get as much uh, reflection of light inside there then I took a thin white styrene strip which is translucent this is just styrene uh, here's the original so you can see where I got it from see it's just plastic thin uh, in fact I can tell you the thickness this is Plastruck I believe these, yep yeah, these are the ones 0.01 inches styrene sheet, you can get this at any hobby shop or online uh, which was ideal because it's easy to cut and shape and it's it's already pre-hazed since it's white and it effectively works to uh, diffuse the light. The whole goal of this thing was to try and eliminate hot spots because if you'll recall again from the movie this is one continuous strip of light. There is no hot spots in here and I really wanted to try and achieve that. Now the way you get rid of hot spots is by doing a lot of diffusing either by sanding or painting with white uh, as a frosting type technique or both uh, getting the LEDs as close together as possible getting them as far away from the surface that they're shining on as possible all these are techniques that eliminate uh, hot spots and well I, I have a white styrene sheet which will defeat uh, a starring sheet with, which will diffuse the light pardon me it's late and I'm tired <laughs> and I also put these uh, lights as far away from the front as possible and they are as low profile as possible I used LEDs and SMDs which are very thin and small so that they'll be as far back as possible rather than LEDs and they don't they, they spread the light more than LEDs they, they don't have as much of a spotlight effect so all these things in combination were designed to try and eliminate the hot spots. Now I'll go ahead and <clears throat> set this up. This will go like that and then I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. All right. All right, I'm back and I have turned off the overhead shop light so you get a better effect and uh, I will go ahead and turn on, hopefully I'm turning on the blue first nope that was a white, okay here's the blue and now the white uh, it looks pretty nice in person uh, I may end up using a 12 volt circuit with this instead of a 9 volt because I want to make this light see I'm turning up the uh, power supply right now to 12 volts I may I may use 12 volts with this kit it would be the first time because this this light is supposed to be really really bright um, and I want it to be as bright as possible that's a 12 volts and uh, as you can see it's nice and bright um, without the grill there's very very slight suggestion of hot spots they're almost non visible but the grill breaks them up nicely so you don't really see any hot spots it's a it's a nice um, diffuse and uh, continuous uh, strip of light and that's exactly what I wanted to achieve now if I get a board uh, I'll be talking to Ralph 
antenna controls and what I would want to have the board do is uh, power up with a blue first, powering up to uh, intensity and then fading out as a white fades in so they shift from one to the other as the engine powers up and I think that would be a pretty neat effect so I'll, I'll be exploring that possibility but for now uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out uh, I was my goal was to get a continuous strip of light with no hot spots and I think I've achieved that in person it looks pretty bright too so uh, I'm happy uh, now uh, I will continue gluing Greeblies and let me show you that because I haven't shown you that yet uh, the toughest parts of this model really are the cockpit which I've already shown you the main engine assembly and any accessory lighting you might want to do and uh, I have some ideas for that aside from the uh, gun turrets but uh, the gluing of Greeblies is basically just tedious work it's uh, multiple small parts as you can see all these parts that are not painted are all glued on Greeblies everything little pipes accessories all these tiny little parts and look at look how the how small they are compared to my finger these things are tiny I already dropped one and I couldn't find it fortunately there was an extra one I hope I don't need the same part someplace else because I don't have it um, but as you can see they add a lot of texture to the surface of the model and, and that's the whole point and it's vastly superior to a molded surface so fine mold definitely has the right idea with this kit uh, I'm really looking forward to completing the painting on it and beginning the weathering which will be a nerve-wracking experience in and of itself since I have no idea if my weathering will be good but uh, at any rate that's my progress and uh, it's coming along nice. Anyway, talk to you later.